Amazing. We have a mizzen mast. Oh, yes. All right, got my buddy Memo helping me out today. Giving the cabin top a quick cleanup, then get all the seams caulked. You're coming too. From Washington State to now sunny California. We've been at it for five years. It began with selling our previous boat and taking that money to buy tools and build a shed. We assembled keel pieces, poured the ballast, and raised all 16 frames in the first six months. There's a boat in there. Now, half a decade later, and at a slower but steady pace, we're in the water. We're salt and tar, and this is our life. Like, subscribe, and support if you can. West of the sunset stands my house. There and east of the dawn, north to the Arctic runs my yard, south to the pole my lawn. Seven seas to sail my ships, to the ends of the earth beyond. Drifter's gold is mine to spend, for I am a vagabond. And so it begins. I dreamt of sailing away to the horizon, to explore what's beyond that thin line where sky meets sea. In fact, it's been a dream my whole life, though as a child I didn't know it was tangible. This idea was born from stories and dreams of pirates, treasure, distant exotic lands, tall ships, and adventure on the high seas. No longer would I be satisfied with a plastic, soulless vessel. My heart screamed at me. And so, bowsprits and belaying pins, wood hulls and bronze ports, wooden spars and three-strand rigging, dead eyes and peril beads, clipper bows and swooping shears, all became necessary for my perfect little ship. This is where the story runs out. The journal came to me years ago, found on board, someone knew it was special, and took it for safekeeping. Not a happily ever after, but maybe we can add to these pages. The boat is gone, but her spars live on. Boat yards are about as harsh as the sea. It will either break you or make you. Sometimes called the sea of broken dreams, there are many unfinished stories here. Check out our new mizzen mast. Well, new. <laughs> Vagabond lives on in Red Aviva. Her main mast is the mizzen we've been missing. Let's see if the two of us can just pick it up. Okay. Oh, easy. So light, right? So easy. You wanna pull your side up and then hop over? I got it. Got it? A little bit tweaked and it's got a little bit of rot is right where you can cut it yeah it's like a it's really like a solid foot above where I can cut it awesome because we only need 25 feet 5 inches oh I thought we needed 30 that was just my excessiveness oh, okay <laughs> Yeah, if I cut it at 26, that's a full foot below the rot. Awesome. Just to make sure there's no other big rot spots, because um, mainly I just want to look at the base. That's where I haven't really been able to see that well. Yeah, because it was under that bush? Yeah. That looks fine. Yeah, before when I was looking, I just found one other 
really small little spot. Here it is. So I can easily cut that out. And put, what did you say, a Dutchman? Yeah, I put a little Dutchman in there. Other than that, it seems pretty damn solid. It's got these bigger rot spots and they end right here. So I'm gonna cut it like a full foot below that. And as a mess, 100 bucks. Put a little thing under it, but I think it fell off. Okay. Oh. Too much? Yeah. Actually, maybe not enough. Put it up more. Go that way with it. There we go. There you go. Sweet. The mast is laminated Sitka spruce. This was just the rough cut to fit it onto the truck. For a hundred bucks, the marina threw in the foremast as well, which is nice because it still had some useful hardware attached. Yeah, the only part it kind of like went a little sideways was pretty much where you cut. Yeah, yeah, that's that's nice, right? Yeah, <laughs> that worked out. This one's got this cool little bronze like end cap. cap on it. We can take the hardware off the second spar and cut off the wonky bit and hope to get our main boom out of it. Because our main boom is what, 14? 14, yeah, actually probably like, well, maybe 15 or 16 feet. It's just coming on now, we can make it. It's cruising super smooth here, we must be going uh, with the wind. Yeah. When we're back there, I can really feel it out there. We're taking the spars to the lumber yard. Thanks, mom and dad, where we can clean them up. I know. Am I good to turn? Yep, you're good. Our main mast is Douglas fir and took at least four people to move. That's not so bad. No, not at all. There's a reason Sitka spruce is top choice for mast material. It's light, strong, and grows straight. So hopefully the rest of this really nice old uh, Douglas fir beam that we have will work for our mizzen step. I already used the majority of it to make our main mast step and it's really sweet. Check out that grain. And it actually came from, funny enough, came from Ruth's brother when I think he was still in high school but he picked up a little construction job and they were doing some demo and this beam came out from above a door and yeah the dude he was working for gave it to him and it's like i wasn't really sure if it was a nice beam or not but i figured you might use it and i'm like oh yes it's so pretty <laughs> <We've> <laughs> and now one it. half fits or holds the base of our main mast and hopefully yeah. the other half will hold the base of the mizzen yeah pretty important pieces look at that green yeah, it's oh. pretty nice. Yeah, so I have no idea how long it spent its life over top some door in some building, but now it's gonna be our mass steps. <laughs> if I go right on top of the keel, that's what I prefer to do, but that's also the piece of the keel back here is the shaft lung, which is fine. There's still plenty of meat, but I just have to make sure whatever lags or spikes or anything I put in are all the way off in the side so I don't accidentally you know, drill into the shaft alley and flood the boat. So, looks like 
this is not long enough for option A, which was on top. Yeah. But it's long enough for option B. I just need to make sure though. Up forward, all the floor timbers are aft of the frames. Mm. And on the the aft half of the boat, all the floor timbers are forward of the frames. So I need to make sure that if I do put it on the keel, the mast, this won't get in the way. You wanna hang a line? Yeah, actually, um, I think first I'll need screw and a plumb bob um, and a sharpie. I know the boat's slightly heeled over to starboard. Which looks about like it kind of makes sense. Yeah, because it's slightly off center to starboard. I know I don't want it perfectly vertical and the mass is going to get raked. And this is just a preliminary little eyeball. So it's going to be somewhere around there. All right, got my buddy Memo helping me out today. We just took the, uh, the mizzen mast uh, that Ruth and I sanded the other day. Brought it over on our truck right here. And me and Memo just carried it down. Got it chalked up on the boat. He's over there pulling the hounds off of the top that we cut. And uh, I'm just going over the whole thing. And there's a couple of tiny little rot spots that I'm just gonna route out and just penetrating epoxy, put some putty over it. Nothing structural. Got him pulling off these nice hardwood hounds on the head of the mast that we cut. But those things are too good to waste, so we're gonna reuse them. Just doing a full on inspection. I might just like, there's a winch here at one time and it was filled with epoxy and they're a little loose so I might just like hit those with a Forstner bit and just glue a couple wood plugs in maybe. Little things like this I'm not gonna worry about. It's a few checks but they're super minimal. Yeah, overall it's, it's fine. So the only part there was any, you know, funk in this mass is it obviously used to have a track going up on this side. So there's just, you know, nothing really bad. A few little putty spots. There are a few little cracks that I just kind of chipped out. No rod or anything, but it was just really loose. So I just chipped them out. Um, there's one tiny little rot spot, so I routed that out. I'm just going to keep it really simple because the whole thing's just going to be slopped up with tar and eventually go black. So I'm just going to fill it with some putty and sand it and call it good. Just slapped a little putty on these areas that I dug out and hit with penetrating epoxy and then most of this will all sand out. There will just be some little green spots on it, which isn't a big deal, but I might just hit them with a little black paint. It's all eventually going to go black anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about it. I just want to get it sealed up. Yeah, just make sure there's no rot. It's actually in really good condition. There's only a, f a couple little superficial rot pockets, but I got rid of those. And then also where there's a mass track along here where they pulled it up. I don't know if it was glued or something, but there's kind of a lot of lifting. Glued it all back down so that's all nice and tight now. Nothing's lifting up. We're just looking for something to hold a sail and be strong. This should This should do the job. Give the cabin top a quick cleanup, maybe with some acetone, and then get everything taped up, and then get all the seams caulked. I'd be satisfying. While Memo was still around, we thought it was the perfect day to tape and seal the cabin top planking. <laughs> oh, nice! Got him! <laughs> <laughs> Successful sunglasses diving mission. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Thank you.
doesn't always match the dream. So hug a sailor, share a meal, and cheers to the sea miles to come. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next week. Somehow defy gravity. I just saw a snake. But you know, when you're about to step down, everything looks like a rattlesnake. You helping tape? <laughs> that was an impressive struggle. Story of my life.